Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. At my parents' home in Spain, we just recently installed photovoltaic solar panels. Actually, it's the home where I'm filming this video from. When I say recently, I mean in March of 2024, and I'm mentioning the date just in case you're watching this video a few months or years into the future and have an idea of exactly when we did the whole installation to compare costs and everything. Anyways, what can you expect to see in today's video? First, I will start with sharing a bit about the exact installation that we did in terms of the models of solar panels, the inverter that we installed and so on. I will also share some preliminary data in terms of how much the solar panels are producing, how much are we self-consuming, and finally, of course, I will also share the return on investment that we expect to obtain from the solar panels based on this preliminary data from the first month of operation, as well as, of course, some technical data that should translate into reality. But of course, there's lots of um, factors that come into play when trying to calculate how much the return on investment will be of installing solar panels. We will talk anyways about this later on, but with that, let's just get right into it. Let's start first with the exact installation done and the cost of it. We have installed 17 solar panels on a roof facing southeast and the pictures that you see now on the screen are actually from our installation, although if you count it there are only 16 solar panels in the picture as there were still one missing to be installed when the picture was taken. These solar panels are from Trina Solar and of 505 watts of maximum power and if you are very technical and want to research more you have of course the pictures on the screen. I also want to mention that we were supposed to get solar panels from JAS Solar, JA Solar, of 495 watts, um, the ones on the screen I believe, but since there are so many people in Spain installing photovoltaic solar panels, the provider didn't have any more of that model, so we got these other ones of Trina Solar instead. With the installed solar panels, we have a theoretical installed capacity of around 8.5 kilowatts hour. In reality, at least during the last month, the peak of production has been at around 7 kilowatts hour. And this is quite normal because, as I mentioned, the orientation of the roof is heading southeast, which is not the best. And also, we just put the solar panels laying directly on the roof. And this is the roof that is a roof that is pretty flat. So the angle, the orientation of the solar panels is not the best for optimum production. We also had the possibility back when we were deciding how to do the installation and so on to add supports but in doing so we wouldn't have been able to put so many solar panels as whenever you add a support this creates shade depending on the time of the day and then we wouldn't have been able to add so many solar panels. Also aesthetically we didn't like it very much to have the solar panels so visible. With the solar panels, an inverter is also needed. In our case, we installed a hybrid one from Sanvec of 7.5 kilowatts hour, which belongs to the company Vector Energy. If you have never heard of the company, it is quite understandable as it is a small Spanish company and much smaller than some of the giants like SolarEdge or Enphase. And yes, we installed an inverter with a slightly lower capacity than the solar panels on the roof, and that is totally fine because we won't reach that maximum of production anyways. Additionally, the installer that came to do the installation told us that usually inverters can accept up to one kilowatt hour more than what they give on paper. And this is because of course, manufacturers need to ensure that it works up to the maximum that they give. So they usually leave some margin. Something I also want to point out is that in our case, we installed a hybrid inverter, which could potentially also support having batteries at home to then store the energy produced during the day and then use it in the evenings or at night. At the moment, we didn't install batteries since in Spain, you can sell the excess of electricity produced to the network and it was not worth it with the current cost of the batteries. However, who knows how the technology and laws will evolve in the future and this way, we already have an inverter that can support batteries. Just so you know, in case you go for a normal inverter and then in the future you want to put batteries, you will need to replace that inverter for a new one and considering that inverters are quite expensive, it might be worth considering already having a hybrid one. In our case, the inverter itself cost was of 1,902 euros and this is also a relevant point because if we had gone for a normal inverter, we could have spent less than that as well. Alright, so with this you now have all the info on everything that we installed. And now let's talk about the cost. We paid for the whole installation 7,499.50 euros, which I would say that it's quite competitive and maybe slightly cheaper than other companies that we had checked and that were offering non-hybrid inverters. We will go into the return on investment later, but to go and check that, we first need to talk about the actual production and how much do we use ourselves from what we produce and how much are we selling to the electricity provider. 
In terms of production, based on last month and trying to project it for a full year, of course considering that during the summer months the production will be higher and in winter lower, I set a daily average of production of the solar panels at around 27 kilowatts hour, which would take us to an annual estimated production of 9,885 kilowatts hour. Of that, based on the past month, I estimated a self-consumption of 35% of that and the 65% remaining that will be sold to the electricity provider because we will not be able to use it in that moment. The next point that I want to check is how much are we consuming at home? This will be again hard to tell because we installed together with the solar panels an aerotheramic system that works with the existing radiators just to heat up the house and an electric water tank of 150 liters. With this we have gotten rid of our natural gas at home and now everything ju runs just with electricity. Last year, for instance, we consumed just 1,208 kilowatts hour of electricity, but on top of that, we also had the gas bills, of course, to heat up the house and for hot water, so this figure is not really representative of the current situation. I won't go into the detail of the aerothermic system or the electric water tank uh, in this video as it would be too long, I will probably leave it for another video. But anyways, what I estimate that we will consume yearly now is of around 5,475 kilowatts hour, which corresponds to a daily average of around 15 kilowatts hour. With this now, we can get into the numbers part. Of the 5,475 kilowatts hour that we consume each year, I have said that we will self-consume 57% of that. This will be mostly because the aerothermic system works mostly during the day in winter, that's when we have the highest temperature set at home, and it's also when the solar panels produce electricity. And the water heater tank is set to only heat up using the electricity from the solar panels. This has been also what we have been self-consuming during the past month. Doing this, we have that for 3,120 kilowatts hour, we won't be paying anything because this is how much we'll be self-consuming from what the solar panels produce. The remaining 2,354 kilowatts hour, we will have to buy them and I have set the average price at around 0.19 euros per kilowatt hour. This is more or less maybe how much we will pay, but it could be that this figure is different depending on the electricity provider that you have. Doing this, we have that we will pay 447.31 euros per year. And from that though, we need to deduct what the electricity provider or company will pay us for selling the excess of electricity that we are not using. This is of 65% of the production, so approximately 6,405 kilowatts hour, which amount to 384.25 euros. To be exact, we also need to add the fixed costs for the power contracted at home and other mandatory costs, uh, which go apart from the price per kilowatt hour that I shared for the electricity. In our case, this amount to approximately 15 euros per month. Doing this, we have that the total yearly cost of electricity for the whole home of just 242.96 euros, which for a relatively big house, it is very good in my opinion. To see how much the savings are, I calculated the cost that we would have if we didn't have solar panels and we had to buy all the electricity. In that case, we have that we would spend 1,095 euros per year on electricity, counting an average price of 0.20 euros per kilowatt hour. And you might also wonder why I have set the price at one cent higher per kilowatt hour than the one that I shared before. And no, it is not a mistake. The reason for that is that in Spain, the prices of electricity, it depends on the home and the contract you have, but most of the homes have three different prices throughout the day. Being the middle of the day, usually when the prices are higher because you know there are all the factories and there's a lot more demand overall in Spain for electricity. And of course then the price is higher. But if you have solar panels, that's precisely when the solar panels are producing electricity, so you are self-consuming already what the solar panels produce, which means that you, when you have to consume electricity, you are paying it at also lower prices because it is in periods of less demand. I could go into more detail, explain it more in depth, but I think that you get the idea. Anyways, doing this, we have that, and also of course adding the fixed cost, we have that we would spend a year 1,275 euros in electricity. If we deduct the 242 euros that we will spend with the solar panels from the 1,275 euros that we would spend without them, we have yearly savings of 1,032 euros. If we divide the initial investment by these yearly savings, we get that in 7.27 years, approximately, we will recover the initial investment. 
To calculate the return on investment, I estimated a lifespan for the solar panels of around 20 years. Could be that they last a bit more, but I want to stay a bit more on the conservative side. And doing the total savings across the lifespan and deducting this from the initial investment, we have a lifespan return on investment of 175.23%, which on a yearly basis represents an 8.75 or 76% sorry, of return on investment. At this point, I think that it's also worth pointing out that all these calculations are with many estimations. And when having solar panels, there are so many variables, many of which are outside of our control, that it's difficult to predict with exactitude the real return on investment. Some of these things include the weather, because we don't decide how many days of sun we get. And of course, depending on the region, where you're living in, where you install the solar panels, you will have maybe more days of sun or less. Uh, the production across also different years can diverge and also the price of the electricity, the amount of consumption of the electricity produced, as well as the total consumption of the house. You might have years where it's colder and maybe you need to consume more, years where it's not so cold. Not to mention that probably at some point across these 20 years of lifespan that I have set for the solar panels, they will also need maybe some kind of maintenance or reparation, which I didn't include in the overall return on investment calculation. All in all, we are super happy with the solar panels that we have installed and besides being a pretty good investment because averaging an 8% yearly return on investment is very similar to what the stock market has given historically, we are also contributing to producing green energy. Last but not least, we, or perhaps I should just say I, enjoy a lot checking all the stats on the app of the solar panels, the inverter and so on, how much the production is every day, the consumption and so on. With it, I will leave it here. What do you think of the installation that we have done? Do you have solar panels at your home? Are you planning on installing them? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, and as always, see you next time.